we can uh, be opening to the book of Job. Job in chapter number 37. Job chapter 37, I'd like to start in verse 5. Here, beginning back in the previous chapter, Elihu had been on this long discourse really about the greatness of God and particularly in nature. The first few verses here talk about God and how he really speaks, if you will, through the lightning and thunder. In verse 5, we'll pick up here. It says, Behold, God, excuse me, that's wrong, chapter, verse 5 of chapter 37, God thundereth marvelously with his voice, great things doeth he, which he cannot comprehend, or which we cannot comprehend. <coughs> For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain, and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into dens, and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. By the breath of God, frost is given, and the breath of the waters is straightened. Also by watering he wearieth the thick cloud, he scatter, scattereth his bright cloud. And it is turned round about by his counsels, that they may do whatsoever he commanded them upon the face of the world and the earth. He caused it to come, whether, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Amen. I can't see the clock, so I don't know how we're on time. The Lord willing, I'd like to look at these few verses here. <laughs> it starts with, God thundereth marvelously, marvelously with his voice. As I mentioned, the previous verses speak of this in even more detail, how that the voice of God is likened unto thunder. I'm not saying that God... Every time God speaks, it thunders, or vice versa. That every time it thunders, God is speaking, but there is an association there in the scriptures. Amen. Uh, we don't have to turn there, but over in John 12, Christ is praying to the Father, and God responds to him in verse 28. It said, A voice from heaven spake unto him. Yeah. In the next verse, the people around reported it's hearing thunder. Revelation 4 and 5. John is described in the throne of God, and he who sits upon it, and it says, that out of the throne proceedeth lightnings and thunders and voices. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the very least, when God speaks, it says thunder, at least to the physical. It says, he thundereth marvelously with his voice, great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. This seems to have been a, kind of a theme throughout the book of Job, the similar phrases found in Job 5, 9, as well as Job 9 and 10, that God has done great things. Really, that's a theme throughout the whole scriptures, isn't it? That God has done great things. Right. On a grand scale, he has done great things, such as creation, which is a, a marvelous thing to behold. But on an individual scale as well, he does great things, doesn't he? Amen. Mm. Let's turn back to 1 Samuel for just a moment. First Samuel 12. Verse number 24 here. Samuel had received a, a message from God to the Israelites and towards the end here he says, Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. Consider how great things he had done for Amen. you. Mm -hmm. It would do us good to just consider what great things God has done for us. Amen. So that's kind of the conclusion that Elihu comes to here as well, as we'll see later on in our text. But just to stop and consider what God has done for us, mm -hmm. I think we would be overwhelmed if we considered all the great things He has done for us. Oh, 
the world attributes much to nature or physics and science. Or, or just look, they might say, like, God, God has done great things for us as his people. Amen. Consider what great things he has done, and it says, which we cannot comprehend. Well, sometimes these workings are outside of the understanding of the carnal mind mm -hmm. that man tries to explain them. Man thinks he has it all figured out, but yet some of the ways of God are just past understanding. Romans 11, yeah, 33 says. So how he spoke and light just happened, I don't know that physically you can explain that. Right. But yet, we know what happened by faith. <coughs> God often uses physical means, but those means are in the direct control of God, as we'll see in the next few verses here. Going on to verse 6, our text says, For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth. It is God who directs even the snow. Amen. Well, we don't have a lot of that here, but when it does happen, it's the hand of God. Right. Whether it's a little snow or a lot of snow, it's the hand of God. So all he has to do is speak, and it happens. As I mentioned, he said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen. He just tells the snow to be on the earth, and it happens. Yeah, I know there is you know, flaws in nature that are in play that God uses, if he will. But he is not bound by them. Amen. If he wanted to snow in the Bahamas, he could snow in the Bahamas. Amen. All he has to say is, be thou on the earth, and it's there. So, first Peter, or excuse me, second Peter, 3 and 7 tell us it's just his word that preserves the earth now. Amen. It's by his word that the heavens and earth are kept in store and reserved for judgment. So if it were not for God upholding this world, it would certainly descend into utter chaos. You're right. I don't know about if science has it all right that they say they do. I'm mm -hmm. sure they don't have it all figured out. You know, whether everything acts the way they think it acts or not. Yeah, I know God is behind it all, or whatever the mechanism may be. Amen. It is he that is saying to the snow, be thou on the earth. It is he that is saying to the storm, go hither or go over there. You know, as I was considering this and as I've considered other lessons I've taught, most of modern science has been developed in just the last about 500 years. Mm -hmm. And yet we take it as fact without right. even questioning. Mm -hmm. My guess, opinion, if you will, my belief is we ought to consider the Word of God first and science secondary. Amen. I think God knows much better about his creation than man does. But anyway, he says to be thou, he saith to the snow, be thou on the earth, and likewise to the small rain, and the great rain of his strength. So it's the same thing applies to the rain, whether it be a little sprinkle or whether it be a torrential downpour, God is commanding that. Matthew 5, 45 says he causes the Sun to shine on the good and the evil and the sins to rain on the just and the unjust. All right. Consider the words of Brother Pink. He said, when we complain about the weather, we are in reality murmuring against God. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, when God is in control of the weather, we complain about it, we're complaining about what God is doing. That's why I don't really care if that little nursery rhyme, rain, rain, go away, come against another day. Right. God knows when we need the rain. Whether we yeah. like it or not. <coughs> you know, I, I think I mentioned it before, rain does not make my job as male care any easier. <laughs> yet we certainly need it. Certainly God knows what is best. Amen. I'm sure Eric can testify as well that sometimes the weather is not always conducive to working outside. <laughs> yet we ought to be careful to complain about right. the weather that God sends our way. 
So he calls it the rain or, or the sunshine or snow. So all these quote unquote acts of nature are all directed by the hand of God. Amen. It's really kind of what Elihu is bringing out here in these verses. And we'll go on to verse 7. It says, He sealed up the hand of every man that all men may know his work. You know, some say that this is referring to the winter, snow, and rain, and the, or they're just the harsh weather in general that man cannot do as he pleases when these things happen. Amen. Man cannot go out and work in the fields when there's snow on the ground. Yeah. You know, when it's other than a few jobs such as carrying the mail, you can't just go out and do what you please in the right. rain. And it's, well, man is limited by what God sends his way. Amen. He sealed it up or closes up will the hand of every man that they may know his work. Well, this is just one way God displays his sovereignty over man. Amen. I think if man had his way, it would it would be sunshine about 70 degrees all the time. Mm -hmm. Yet that's not what is needful, is it? Amen. Well, I think I heard someone say, you know, they don't like to be told what to do, but even if they were alone on a deserted island, the weather would tell them what they can and can't do. Amen. <clears throat> no, God reminds us, if we will, that we are not as much in control as we think we are. Proverbs 16, 9. Let's turn there. I can't quite quote it. Proverbs 16, 9. <laughs> so the man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directed his steps. <laughs> Man thinks, I'm going to do this or do that. But ultimately, it's God who directs the steps where to go. Right. You know, man says, I will do this or that. But James says, you ought to say, if the Lord will, we will do this or that. Amen. Man is set out to do many things and yet fail many times as well. I'd say each and every one of us have had made plans or had intentions to do something, and yet... Whether we attribute it to God or not, God has directed us some other way. I give you an example. I intended to build a house this year, and the Lord had other plans for me. Right. They might call me eight hours away to North Carolina. I don't know. Right. Anyway, man often makes plans and thinks he's going to do something, yet God has to remind him that he is ultimately the one in control. Amen. You know, even the weatherman cannot get it right most of the time. Right. Mm. You know, I, man so he looks at the weather forecast and says, well, it's going to be sunny, so I'm going to do this or do that. And if you know anything about Tennessee weather, you, right. it's likely to change before Hours over, so no God is in one of many ways showing his sovereignty over man just by controlling the weather. Amen. Let's go on to verse number eight here. It says, Then the beasts go into dens and remain in their places. But we've got a sovereign over the animals as well. That he when he sends these things that they have to go into shelter. This could be a reference to hibernation as well, that they go in and hibernate for the winter time, that they cannot do as they please either. Amen. Oh God is sovereign over all of his creation. Verse 9 says, Out of the south cometh the whirlwind and cold out of the north. So we see whirlwinds or, or hurricanes are also under the control of God. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have to worry about hurricanes here in Tennessee, but we do the aftermath of the storms usually. Right. 
that all of that is under the control of God. Mm -hmm. And the cold out of the north, that's, it's that time of year when we start getting the cold from the north. The cold air, the wind, the blow, mm -hmm. that seemed to almost cut through the bone sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yet, is it not God who is directing that? Amen. So just a side note, since we have tornadoes here, when the warm air comes up from the north or from the south and the cold from the north, that's when we end up with tornadoes. Mm -hmm. And yet God is in control of those as well. Amen. Why is it that North America has four times as many tornadoes as the rest of the world combined? I don't know. But yet God is in control of that. <clears throat> So yes, it's a great tragedy, I guess you could say, when these storms come and people's lives are lost and their whole lives are destroyed, if you will, their possessions and whatnot, but yet, is that not the hand of God just the same? Amen. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but he has his purpose for all of these things. Amen. You know, Nahum 1, 3, it says, that the Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. We can be sure it's God having his way. Amen. It's not some act of Mother Nature that has no, no direction behind it, if you will. Just right. So God is having his way in the storms and the whirlwinds and the tornadoes and the rains, the snow, whatever it may be. He is accomplishing his purpose through these things. He is not taken by surprise when a hurricane pops up out in the ocean and starts heading towards the Gulf Coast or the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So he is having his way even in that. You know, verse 10 will go on. It says, By the breath of God, the cross is given, and the, the breadth of waters is straightened. Some say this means that the Word of God, that he is the one who gives the cross, and certainly he is. Some of them say this is figurative. That cross comes as if God himself had breathed it out during the night. Certainly it does. It appears overnight without any, yeah. without any storm bringing it in, without any wind bringing it in. Just as the dew, which really the frost is just the frozen dew. Mm -hmm. But these things come even by the Word of God. We take them as just a normal act of nature. Yet if it were not for God, even that would not happen. And the breadth of the water is straightened. Straightened means that it's restricted. Some think that it's referring to the waters being frozen during the winter months. Either which way, God is in control of the waters. Well, he is He's controlling them, they're keeping them in their courses, if you will. Amen. So man has set up the dam over here to control the Cumberland River, but even that cannot control when God says overflow. Mm -hmm. I know Brother Ken and Brother Petito weren't around here about 10 years ago when that flood happened, but it was a very clear indication that man cannot control the waters. Amen. So God very much is, directs the rivers of water with us whatever he will. Proverbs 4, 21, verse 1 tells us. Amen. So <coughs> he controls the heart of the king. He controls the rivers of water just the same. Matthew 8, 27, they marveled at Christ. So what manner of man is this that even the sea and the winds obey his voice? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think they missed the point just a little bit there. He was born just a man. But Amen. But what a marvel that our God controls those things. He says, The breath of the water is straightened also by water, and he weareth the thick cloud, and he scattereth his bright cloud. And he fills the clouds up so that it might rain again. And we in school, he was in public school, I'm sure. Most others, too, learned about the water cycle. You know, that wasn't developed 
until about 500 years ago, <laughs> 1580 AD. You know, I don't know <coughs> it's exactly how it all works. So we take it as fact, right? But I know God knows how it works. Amen. You know, whether it's evap evaporation going back up in the sky and filling up the clouds, that's still the hand of God. Amen. Well, I said man has tried to figure out all these things, but when he created the earth, where was man? Mm -hmm. When he set all these things in motion, where was man? There was none that was his counselor, Isaiah says, none taught him, or none that instructed him. Amen. No, it is, whether we can physically explain it or not, it is the work you know, of God that keeps all these things in motion. He scattered it's a bright cloud, he says here. And even the clouds are his. So it says he scattered his bright cloud. <clears throat> oh, the, he sends the nice white puppy clouds that we like to see, and he sends the storm clouds the same. Amen. Psalm 115, verse 3 says, He is our God is in the heavens, he had done whatsoever he had pleased. He, he wants to send us a sunny day or a cloudy day. That's <coughs> His will do as he pleases. Amen. If he wants to send a storm our way, or if he wants to send a storm over to Woodlawn and Indian Mountain and this Bumpus Mills, that's his will as well. Amen. Verse 12 says in it, and it is turned round about by his counsels. So he gives direction or guidance to the will. He steers the clouds where the they are to go. It is God who tells them where to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm reminded of the little Doppler radar. You see the, those storms moving along and you think it's going to go this way. All of a sudden it turns and goes another way. Right. That's God directing it by his counsel. You know, man, me, man, in particular, meteorologists will say that you know, the storm will travel this path and it's going this many miles per hour and it's going to hit here about this time. And then before it gets there, this time went north or south or mm -hmm. broke it up. And I've seen that a lot of times in our area. It breaks up and goes right around us. Amen. Uh, is that not God steering them, if you will, whether they are to go? And notice the end of the verse there, that they may do whatsoever he commanded them upon the face of the world and the earth. And throughout the whole world, the weather is doing just as God commands. Mm -hmm. Exodus 13, 21 tells us about the pillar of cloud that led the Israelites on around to the wilderness. It was God directing that cloud just as much as he directs the other clouds. Amen. Yes, it was God that directed them to wander around for 40 years. Because of their disbelief. So I was reminded of Elijah, first King 19, when you they ran and hid. There was a great wind and a great earthquake and a great fire. I said God was not in all these, but then there was still a small voice. And behind all those things, all these quote unquote acts of nature, there is God working. Amen. Go on verse 13 and 14 we'll close up. He caused it to come whether for correction or for his land or for mercy. You know, God often has more than one purpose in his doings, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. And what he caused to happen in one instance may not be for the same reason in a different case. <coughs> oh, several here have had COVID. Does that mean all of y'all had it for the same purpose? Probably not. To God accomplish multiple purposes through that thing, that's quite possible. Probably most likely possible. Mm -hmm. We do know that all things work together for good of them that love God, and then we're the call to right. His purpose. Amen. 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 No correction is for our good. Hebrews 12 11 tells us this. Certainly for His land, or that the earth might be sustained, that crops may grow, the vegetation may grow, that is for our good. 
and for mercy. Oh, how we need mercy, don't we? Amen. No matter if you don't think God controls the weather and the rain, and just look again at the life of Elijah and prayed in three and a half years it didn't rain upon the earth there. <coughs> Was that just some chance or some lucky coincidence that he prayed and it didn't rain? No, God was in control of that. Amen. Then he prayed again and it did rain. Amen. And if I understand it correctly, it wasn't just a little sprinkle either. It was an abundance of rain. But why did he send that? I think he had to show way of who he really was, didn't he? Amen. Perhaps the light and he had to a lesson as well, though. Lesson to trust God. He had certainly had to trust God in that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he wasn't going to be spared from all the effects of that three and a half year drought. We had it pretty good at first. The ravens came and gave him food. And he had a brook there to water him, but the brook dried up. So every one of us would probably say, "Well, God, uh, what you going to do now?" The brook's good. It's a bit dry here. So then his next plan was probably even more logically unreasonable, if you will. I'm going to send you the widow, the poorest of the poor. She's only got enough for one cake, but yet she's going to sustain you. Mm-hmm. Yet that is the workings of our God. Let's read verse 14 and close. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Here we see, again, we'll have. Samuel said, consider the works of God. Now we have to consider just in creation alone is enough to overwhelm you and to be amazed by it. You can consider what he's done in your life. Or that we would stop from all our business and all our worries and just consider what God has done. I think we would also come to the same conclusion that David in Psalms 8, if we Consider the greatness of God in creation. When I consider the stars and the moon and the works of thy hand, what is a man that thou art mindful of him? Amen. Man, such a small and is insignificant thing in the big picture, if you will. But yet, God has been so gracious and merciful to us, so good to us. Amen. Or let us consider his works. Let's close with that thought. Dismissed.